Let's get you the latest on the story now. Bring in Bafu Zeyabo. He's the ANC's regional spokesperson in Tswane and joins us via our video link. Uh, Bafu, it's great to have you on the SABC. Thanks for your time and patience. You know what they say, 24 hours is a long time in politics. We've heard of meetings that took place yesterday. I don't know if you're able to confirm that for us, but the main question really is, is this vote of no confidence still going ahead? Good morning and uh, good morning to your viewers. Uh, I can confirm that the vote of no confidence is definitely going ahead. I think uh, uh, you should be seeing with uh, Brink's reaction that uh, he, he's, he's definitely on the way out. I think uh, we should safely say uh, that he's, uh, he, he's, he's going out today. Sure. At the end of the day, we will not have a mayor called uh, Celia Brink. All right. Um, as I mentioned, we're hearing of meetings that apparently took place at a national level with some of your own leaders in Tswane. Are you able to take us through perhaps some of the details of what emerged from that meeting? Because um, initially there was, I suppose, some kind of reporting um, that Lutuli House itself would be stepping in here. Well, I can, I can just confirm that uh, we got given the green light yesterday uh, by the national leadership to proceed with the motion of no confidence. It was always a, a question of uh, getting that instruction from uh, the, the national leadership. In the case of metros, and perhaps this is a, a very important point that we must make, in the case of metros, uh, the national uh, executive committee uh, holds sway in relation to what then must happen in uh, formation of government uh, by the ANC or with the involvement of the ANC. And so in any other local government uh, scenario, uh, the structure which leads at the level of the region would uh, be seized with the responsibility of guiding the process themselves. In the metro, the NEC gets involved because uh, it's a, it's a resolution that a, a conference took that uh, because of the nature of metros, um, the contribution to, to, the, to the GDP and, and all of those things, they must have uh, an oversight uh, role played by the NEC in this instance. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because it's not like the metros in this country have shown any signs of more political stability than any other local government structure. I suppose the question is, is this working? I mean, residents in Tswane are watching what's likely to unfold today, some of them completely exasperated because of the revolving door that has been the um, mayor's office at least over the past couple of years. I mean, it's been unfortunate that since uh, 2016, we've seen uh, <coughs> changes of executive mayors uh, from, from the DA. I think uh, we are now sitting on mayor number four. If we are to be uh, specific, if we are to be technical about it, we are sitting on mayor number five. If we are to count uh, Abel Dao, who acted for a considerable period of time as a mayor, as an executive mayor here. So that change in leadership, especially in the mayor's office, does not augur well for stability, political stability, and in the running of the affairs of the city. But the DA has been failing to lead the city. It has been failing to take it uh, from where it found it to, to, to the next level, if you may. And it is that issue that uh, we are contending with, that if they are failing to lead, they must then uh, uh, make way for better leadership. Uh, who can take this city to, to the level it's supposed to be and compete uh, globally? I mean, we are the third biggest municipality by land mass in the world. We, we should be uh, looking at uh, competing with the best of the best in the world. We've got the highest concentration of foreign missions in the city. We are the capital city of South Africa. And, and so you cannot have a capital city which is cited as one of the worst performing municipalities in the country. It doesn't augur well even for, the, uh, for, for, for a perspective of a capital city mm. of South Africa. Right. I can almost hear Celia Brink pushing back because he's done so many interviews around this. Part of what he said in his own defense is that, number one, he doesn't lead alone. In fact, he's almost alluding to the fact that a mayor's political survival in the city hinges on how stable the coalition itself is. And the second point he's made at nauseum is that whilst, you know, the city's audit outcomes aren't the best, they are moving in the right direction. Almost as to say that if he's given more time, he might be able to turn the city around finally. 
Well, unfortunately, we will never find out whether he's right or not, uh, because um, he's a successor in title, and it's the DA that messed up the city. He is a mayor of the of the DA. He's not done any better than his predecessors, if we are to be honest. And and we can say it with uh, confidence because we've got the AGSA's report on record. Uh, saying that the city is is is, is at a state of being insolvent, um, uh, its liquidity ratio is appalling, uh, and this is still under his uh, under his watch. So to say that uh, he has done better, he's patting himself on the back when we have an authority that speaks on. Um, uh, auditing and measuring the performance of uh, of states uh, uh, or government uh, saying no you're not doing well uh, whose word must we take must we believe brink must we believe the agsa i think i take my bets and believe the agsa on this one all right um the solution south africans who are watching what's happening will tell you that we've seen this movie before um there's going to be a successor that's installed that person will also be given time until the next tectonic shift, at least politically speaking. And I suppose the question becomes to you, uh, at what stage do we stop allowing politicians to blame legacy issues on um, their own shortcomings in their own performance? Put differently, Celia Brink, for example, says he inherited a city in disarray. The DA itself has said that. It's an argument the ANC has made in other contexts where it's been given an opportunity to lead. And you can imagine, um, all of this is translating to ordinary citizens, perhaps those specifically in Tswane today, as indicating that no one, in fact, knows how to finally turn uh, the situation around, and perhaps not even the ANC. Well, Msimanga said he inherited a, a, a collapsing city. Mukhalap after him said the same thing. Williams, after him, said the same thing. Um, Brink is saying the same thing. And I, I will say your question is relevant. At which point do we then uh, stop and think, but when are you going to start accounting for your own uh, uh, performance over leading a city of this nature? Where do you stop blaming the past or those who have come before you? And it's, it's very ironical that it's the DA who then say um, they want to blame uh, legacy issues within the democratic dispensation. And they are the loudest when we refer to the uh, apartheid and colonialism era. They say, no, we must forget about that. That is long gone. Let's deal with the current situation. When they are given an opportunity to govern, they are the first ones to invoke um, sins of the past of uh, those who had uh, uh, governed over a city such as uh, the city of Tuan. So yeah. I'm saying it's hypocrisy of the highest order, if you ask me. Yeah, I, I hear that and I accept it. And in some ways, I handed it to you. But my question is a bit more nuanced than that. Um, I'm alluding to a lack of trust in politics and politicians, which has really felt palpable over the past couple of weeks. And it's, you know, I think it's going to be manifest in the public expression, or at least in the public sentiment that's going to be shared today, no matter what happens in council. Well, we are moving on, on, on public sentiment more, more than anything on this one, because it's the public who have been saying the DA has been failing us, especially in the townships. We've not been giving, getting the services we deserve. We, we've been uh, struggling. Uh, we've not seen economic improvements. We've not been getting jobs. And a lot of those things that really matter to the ordinary citizens and residents of this city. And we are responding to that outcry, in all honesty. And uh, we believe that it is the duty of politicians or political parties, uh, such as the ANC, to restore the confidence of the people in the ability to govern in their interest and to deliver as we promise in our manifestos. And that's what we are seized with right now, to try and get the city back on track, to deliver on the promises we've been making, to make life much better and easier for the residents of this city. All right. For all intents and purposes, it seems Celia Brink will be out today. Herman Mashaba has already come out to say that if this motion is moved, Action SA will essentially go and support it. And I think that tallies the numbers. The next question becomes, do we have a successor in mind? Is that somebody who's likely to come from the ANC, perhaps? 
Well, I'm, I'm not in a position to give an answer to that. I, I, would, I would respond as I've been responding uh, to all interviews I've taken. The leadership is seized with that. There will be, obviously, a, a, a roundtable meetings uh, with the various parties to decide on the future of the city and who will uh, be best suited to take it to, to the next level to remediate uh, the state uh, we are in right now. Um, Perhaps in a few days, we will come out and say, this is the way forward, this is who's coming, uh, confidently when a decision has been reached. All right. And I suppose, like my colleagues, I'll have to accept your answer. Bafuzeya, well, thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. We appreciate <laughs> Thank you your much. time. And we'll certainly watch the space to see how today unfolds. Bafuzeya is the spokesperson for the ANC in Tswane.